I made a change to my web design service in the last year that has really improved the quality of my final websites. It's made clients really happy. I know this because they comment on it all the time. And it's overall added a ton of value to projects without creating an enormous amount of extra work. And today I want to talk through what this is in case it's something that you want to try or in case you're like I was and you're actually already doing it, but you're not fully articulating the value to clients or potential clients. This is part one in a series I'm calling tried and actually made a meaningful difference in my business or as I'll call it, TAMDIM. But uh, ridiculous acronyms aside, I'm starting this series by talking about how I create high quality custom brand imagery for my website projects. Let's dive in. So as web designers, I think that finding these ways to elevate our work and go just a bit beyond what everybody else is offering is really one of the keys to being able to charge more premium prices and stand out. And there's many different ways to do that, but the reason that I think that offering custom brand imagery is an especially great way to do this is that it can absolutely make or break a a website. So you can have a website with a very minimal aesthetic, but if it's paired with high quality, stunning images, it's going to feel really upscale and polished, right? And the opposite is also true. So a very elegant web design can get kind of dragged down by mediocre images. So I want to break down the step-by-step -step of how I've added this service into my web design process. When it came to sourcing images for websites, I used to do one of three things, each of which frankly came with its own special kind of headache. So one, I would ask the client, to provide me with imagery, which often meant kind of low quality photos or none at all. Two, I would spend so much time digging through stock image websites and I wouldn't even feel that happy with what I ultimately landed on. And three, I would try creating my own custom images using tons of different AI tools, but I never really loved the results and I definitely did not enjoy the process. Mid journey, I am looking at you. And then I found Visual Electric, and for me, that was a real game changer. And no, this is not sponsored. It's just the best image generating tool I've personally found so far. It's not perfect, but it really does feel that it's optimized for us designers, which I really appreciate. And once I got the hang of this tool, which honestly took less than a day, I started formally offering AI generated brand imagery as kind of an optional add-on service. And I noticed right away that nearly all clients were interested in including this in their projects. So the process of producing these images kind of starts during the website strategy and planning phase of projects, which is when the client and I align on the overall creative direction of their website. And this is where I will share mood boards and visual references, etc. And once the creative direction is approved, we move to the website homepage design. And this is where the visual direction really gets applied. And this is where Visual Electric would come in. In my Figma file, I like to set up a page called imagery where I will start dropping in images as I create them. So let me walk you through a couple examples. For this website, I wanted to show a forest with two layers of trees moving at slightly different speeds as the user scrolled to create an illusion of growth. Now, normally finding the perfect forest photo with the exact lighting that I wanted, so with some orange in it to match the brand color, taken at the perfect height perspective, would be super annoying to find or to piece together in Photoshop. But here I just jumped into Visual Electric and you can see that it took some iteration to get exactly what I wanted, but this was the final image that I used. And here is the prompt. A dense forest of towering evergreen trees under a white sky. The trees are rich in dark green tones with a few lighter patches indicating younger foliage and golden sunlight. The lighting is soft and diffused, creating a serene and tranquil atmosphere. And this is kind of to match the overall vibe of the brand feel we were going for. The perspective captures the top half of the trees, emphasizing their height against the sky. The tree line is fully visible. None of the trees are cut off of the top of the frame. So I think I added that last part because of some previous tries that were cutting off the trees. This is definitely a longer prompt. I added to it quite a bit when it wasn't giving me what I wanted in order to try to get it right. 
Um, and all of the other images that you can see on this website, I also created in Visual Electric. Another good example of making use of custom generated imagery is this website for a psychology clinic. So we had a section listing all of the different issues that they specialized in treating. And as the user hovered, I wanted to show a corresponding image. So it would be extremely hard to find good stock imagery for each of these, especially with this particular portrait orientation. And I really felt like this subject matter needed to be treated in the right way. So I wanted the photos to be serious, but not overly sad and heavy or clinical. We wanted them to have a kind of peaceful and hopeful vibe. So again, just the art direction of the images really should match the overall brand. And with the help of Vision Electric, I felt like I was able to produce a really strong set of images that struck the right tone. Okay, now I wanna give you a few specific prompting tips and some rapid fire examples. So as we've learned in the past few years, when it comes to AI, basically the more specific the prompt, the better the result and the more likely that the outcome will align with what's in your head. So it definitely took me a bit of trial and error to figure out what details actually matter to include in the prompt. But to give you a sense, here's some images that I think turned out pretty well and the exact prompts that I used to get them. So I won't read through the entire prompts. You can pause or screenshot if you're curious. For this aerial shot, I realized this prompt is quite long. It probably could have been shorter, but honestly, some of the more stunning images I've seen created on Visual Electric, when I checked which prompts created those images, which is really easy to do within the software, they do tend to be more detailed. Here's an example of an image where my prompt was really short and I thought it turned out pretty well. So sometimes if what you're looking for is fairly straightforward, you really don't need to write a whole detailed paragraph. Here's an example of a non-photography image that I created for a video. I think it's pretty cute. And I wanted to show this to point out that you're not only limited to photography with this tool. That's, I would say, what I most commonly am producing, but they do have all sorts of different image styles that you can choose from. And I think it's pretty cool to know that that's an option. So as a general prompting tip, I've found that it's really helpful to specify things like what lighting you want. So warm, bright, calm, um, facial expressions, so natural or slightly smiling or peaceful, and also to be very specific when describing interiors. So I think that if you don't specify those sorts of things, the images can just turn out like really dark or the facial expressions can look very unnatural and cheesy and interiors can look really generic. So basically the images can look painfully like cheap stock photos, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. I'll be honest, this tool is not perfect. It can be a bit slow and sometimes the images come back and they are just not it and I'll have to iterate quite a bit or even just start a whole new canvas. But when I do get a good image, what I do is I will scale it up, download it, and drop it into my Figma project file under the images page. And then at the end of the project, I will usually end up putting all of the best images, even the ones we don't end up using for the website, into a folder so that the client can just have them. And again, this is really not that much extra effort for me, but it's something that clients really appreciate and is very valuable to them. I love being able to offer clients an add-on service that is so helpful to them, that really elevates the quality of their final website, and that's not a huge pain in the ass for me to deliver on. In fact, it's actually a pretty fun process. So I hope this was helpful, and if it was, stay tuned for more episodes of Tam Dim. Yes, we are sticking with that. And if there's other image generating tools that you love, definitely let me know because I'm curious what other designers are using and if there's anything out there that's even better than this. Thanks.